Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. I'm making this video here to help you out with um, number 67 in chapter 10 of the uh, University Physics OER textbook. So it says something like a uniform rod of one kilogram and two meters is free to rotate about an axis. If the rod is released from rest at 60 degrees with respect to the horizontal, what speed will the tip be as it passes through the horizontal position? So I've started already with a picture. This rod is hinged and free to rotate about that point. The tip is here and if this thing is released from rest this is going to start rotating in this direction. Now it's important to realize that the angular velocity there is going to change. It's going to, I'll just, I'll just put uh, the angular velocity is going to increase. So we know there's going to be an angular acceleration. Now in order to answer the question, it says the speed of the tip. So here's position two. What they're talking about is the speed of the tip of, of uh, the rod right here. So the velocity vector there would be in this direction. That velocity is related to the angular velocity at that instant shown. I'm gonna just go ahead and put uh, L times uh, omega, or you could write that in the language of calculus, L times theta dot, because the theta dot and the angular velocity are the same thing. Now, the first thing you have to do in a physics problem is you have to choose a method to analyze. And basically, most first semester physics courses, you know, the mechanics part of the courses can be broken up into three regions, right? You study motion. This is where we do like velocity graphs. And, you know, we talk about area under the curve and slope and stuff like that. There's Newton's second law. I always just say Newton 2. This is where we draw free body diagrams and write Newton's second law equations. And then there's principles of work and energy. Pretty much uh, any physics class, for any first semester physics class that you take, the mechanics portion of it, almost every problem can be broken down into one of these three types. Now, let's talk about these two and why this would not be a good place to start here. If you look at a free body, and I'll go ahead and draw that. We're going to have an mg down at the center of mass. The pin is applying some sort of force. I'm going to go ahead and just put that in component form, like px and py. And if you, we were to sum torques about this point, the gravitational force creates torque about this point. The gravitational force acts all along this line. The torque is equal to force times distance, where that distance is perpendicular. So you could pretty easily write a torque equation and calculate the angular acceleration from Newton's second law for rotation. You could do that at the instant shown. But as soon as this angle changes, you have to imagine what will happen here. This point will rotate down a little bit, and that means this distance increases. And that's going to change your angular acceleration. So a very important thing to realize about this problem, this is not a constant angular acceleration problem. Um, your angular acceleration will end up being a function of theta. Right, so you're going to have alpha is theta dependent. And that means that what you're going to have out of this is a differential equation um, for uh, to solve to get the angular velocity against time and or uh, the angular velocity against theta. It doesn't mean it can't be solved like that. I mean, this is a uh, fairly typical uh, type of mechanics problem in a, in a maybe a dynamics course. But actually writing a position-dependent equation like this and solving it is beyond the scope of this course, Physics 221 here. So we're going to want to avoid this method because it's a bit more math. Same thing with this. These two methods are not going to, to uh, produce nice, easy results. However, this can be handled very easily with principles of work and energy. So go ahead and write out your work energy theorem. PE1 plus KE1 plus work from 1 to 2 equals PE2 plus KE2. I've already uh, kind of labeled the positions 1 and 2. Potential energy terms. My advice, I definitely would do a datum through here, which means your PE1 term is going to be an MGH term. You measure H to the center of mass, so that's going to be that height. That's what you're going to need for your H1 term. Starts from rest, right? So kinetic energy term would be zero. This work term, well, I erased the free body, but if I go back and put those forces in there quick, we had an MG. 
and then this pin force I had in component form, px, py. This force does work as this uh, center of mass moves down to this position, but that term is, is typically taken into account with the potential energy, so you don't need to worry about this guy. These forces don't do any work because the pin is not moving. There's no displacement. So the work term will end up zero because this force is taken into account with a potential energy, and these do not do work because there's no displacement and there's no other forces present in the system. So your work term zero. Let me get rid of these now. All right, PE2, right? You're at your datum. KE2. Now there's different ways to express the kinetic energy in picture two. I mean, let me talk about you know some methods you could use. We could break this problem into little chunks and say they have like maybe a length dx and therefore a mass dm and therefore a kinetic energy equal to one half times dm times the velocity of each chunk squared. The velocity, if I call this distance x, the velocity can be written, uh, let's see, x times the angular velocity and then squared. And then this expression could be integrated to get a kinetic energy term. But there's no reason to do that, right? This is why we use moment of inertia. This system has a moment of inertia, I, equal to one-third ml squared. This you can look up. And that allows you to write the kinetic energy term in terms of the angular velocity. So this term is going to look something like one-half I omega squared. The omega is the, the angular velocity at position two. And that's going to tell you the rotation rate, the angular velocity. And that number is good for all points on the body. All points on this body have the same angular velocity. So you should end up with a pretty easy equation, and you should be able to get the angular velocity out of that equation, no problem. Now to answer the question, it says, what is the speed of a point on the tip? All right, so for, for rotational motion, remember, going back and forth between the translational variables and the rotational variables. It starts with the definition of the radian, s equals r times theta. All right, and that's the definition of the radian concept. Because theta in radians is defined as the ratio s over r. You time differentiate this equation, the time derivative of a distance is now a speed. So the magnitude of your velocity is equal to, assuming r is constant, this would be r times theta dot. And that's what we call the angular velocity, so r omega. In this case, the r would be this distance, the length of the bar. Now, um, if we wanted the velocity or the speed of the center, same equation, it's just for the r, we would use half the length and so forth. Now, the question didn't ask for it, but another interesting thing to calculate, how about the centripetal acceleration at the end of the blade? That would equal v squared over r. The v is where, what we calculated here, and the r, again, would be the uh, length. And I would encourage everyone to go ahead and do that and calculate a number for the centripetal acceleration. I know it doesn't ask that for the question, but I think you'll find that to be a pretty interesting number. After you get a number, compare it to g, gravitational acceleration of uh, 9.8 meter per second per second. So that should be enough uh, on this problem. Use work energy between 1 and 2 to get the rotational speed, the angular velocity of the bar, and then use v equals r times the angular velocity to get the speed of the tip. So hope this helps. Have a great day.